where I see our only tool to do something constructive is imagination. We have to figure out what can we do with ourselves. Most people say, there's nothing I can do about anything, and when you say to a client, yeah, but you can. You, you, you can imagine a better place to live, you can imagine a better company to buy, or you can imagine a better job to have, or, you know, whatever, something different. Most people will say, I don't know what you mean, I, I'm not an artist, I can't think of anything else. So you have to kind of train and teach folks to say, yeah, you can. You, you can just sit down and take a piece of paper and a pen and write a list of where would I like to live? Uh, what kind of persons would I like in my life next year? Um, what kind of work would I like to do? And in general, you know, what could I do that's different from what I'm doing now? So that's a tool that you can actually, uh, and I mean all of you do it anyway. That's something that we can do to change our internal both perception to the outside and management of inside, and then apply to what we do externally continuously use this creative power and this force that we have from inside to change outcomes by continuously using the things I've just mentioned. Once you decide, I want to create a gold fund, right? then you have to apply what I just said. Well, how am I going to do a gold fund? <laughs> well, then there you go. You do write your list and go about doing it. You see, all of the stuff I'm showing you and my friends and my clients, is that it's, it's totally doable. And most of you sitting here, of course, must be laughing, saying, yeah, that's right, that's exactly how I did it. We're talking a little bit also to those who are watching us, and who are, and I know this from the reactions of my readers and also some clients, they are under a lot of stress, you understand? People who do not have this internal peace of mind, and knowing that it's all good, and I'm not kidding you, when, when she says to me always, I'm glad it's all good. Despite of outdoor events, despite of all the stuff that we know, we know eventually we will as a whole group of humans take the next turn. But it's at the moment more urgent that we do to turn ourselves, each one for herself, for himself. And then we can do it. Those of us, those of the others who are around you, you know, your friend, child, your uncle, your business partner, whoever, they see, wow, this guy just changed in one year. I knew him then and now this is not a person, what happened? Then you can show them. You don't have to teach them. You don't have to share the stuff that I'm saying. That's why our rule of thumb is show them, don't tell them. They will then sort of intuitively grasp what you are able to do. Maybe you can give them a few tips, say, write a list of stuff and so on and imagine and visualize or you can do what I did and this is kind of fun I knew that I like crystals and I like gold and this I know it's just because I like I don't know why crystal and gold I found out if you put crystal and gold together you create some sort of magnetic stream almost electromagnetic I'm not a scientist like I said I'm self-taught so I don't know the right words but it began because I was collecting crystals like a crazy person and I had boxes and boxes of the stuff but I wanted it to look nice at my tables where I would work because I used crystals also to protect the computers and myself from you know stuff and telepathy that I didn't want or just elements that I knew should stay out so I could write my book and then I used to put the crystals in big jars like you know Imagine a vase full of it, and then I have to move again to another place. Okay, now everything has to go. <laughs> Finally, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna put it in a small glass and do something to it that it sticks together and put the gold in it. And I thought, oh, that's nice, and it feels nice, and it does something. You can use it for all sorts of things that you like, but that's up to you. I can't tell you what you should use it for. And then I can tell you that I prefer you do it. And then this friend. That he he looked in and said, hmm. okay, I said, well, two grand. He has a gold thing. He said, yeah, give me one. And then a month later, he comes to see me and he gave me another one. <laughs> so he and her and, and you, those were the first few who, who had those. And then we did the website of it. I created maybe another hundred. And somebody told me, 
liquid it now because you're going to dilute it. So granted, they're not cheap because it's, it's complex to do them right. And, and it's my artwork. It's just three-dimensional paintings. I can hand one to you and you can just pass it around. So I call them resonators. Some of them have gold coins in it, or plain gold, or silver. And some of them have gemstones in it. There's another one there, right? Oh, yeah. And some of them have combined structures that can stand on a table. Pass it around. And some of them you can use like mirrors. And that's enough to your imagination. You can just say, okay, you there, you good force out there, let's say a transdimensional shape. They travel, by the way, all trans, I mean, interdimensional. They don't, the real guys, the big guys, they don't move. A tin can from A to B is through space. It can take them 80 million thousand years to go from one place to the other. Because they travel to trade, by the way, they do trading. Right, they trade from one galaxy to the other. The Earth is a stopover point among many. And so there are some good guys out there, very advanced, that they're positive towards us. They, they're saying, look, we're going to help you guys do our experiment. We need to like, bring you now up here 10,000 years into the future now. You need to move. And so there are good guys. There's some that are not so good. Some are saying, now we just want to own this planet and control everything. That's all we want. But the good guys, you can get in touch with them through these mirrors. And they gave me this idea. I didn't really come up with the idea. Sure, I was playing around. But eventually, something said to me, do this. Don't question it. Because I'm the kind of guy who, when I get an outside input, input, I usually say, yeah, but you know, because it has to be from me. Since I'm a little guy, it always has to be from me. If it came from outside, father, mother, whatever, no. <laughs> Teacher, no. So, so I, I was a bit like, a bit warped, you know, so in my next book, by the way, which I will share with you maybe next year, I talk more about a bit my childhood and how this all went, but anyway, when I was then about 48 years old, I'm now 56, 47, nine years ago, I built the first ones. They were relatively rudimentary or primitive because I wasn't yet technically able to do it right, but these ones that you're holding now, those are the more advanced ones, my latest ones, after which time, this was two years ago, I decided to no longer craft any more of those. And we still have about 40 or 50 that are available. <coughs> and then if everything is gone, we'll see, I can do something new. Generally, I don't like to do always the same stuff with myself. I get bored quickly at Mars and Gemini. By the way, Mercury is today exactly where Mars was when I was born. And Neptune is today exactly where my son was when I was born. And Saturn is now exactly where Jupiter was when I was born. I was born in the Grand Cross in the mutable signs for the astrologers. And we have now three of those points occupied. So you, sir, said to me, therefore, I'm what? The spokesman? He said, spokesman, right? And then I said to her, he said, I'm the spokesman. <laughs> And she said, yeah, but of what? So maybe those guys are not what? Extemporaneous. <laughs> Extemporaneous. Okay, now, you have to forgive me, I need my notebook. I lost track. So we did um, a little bit of Bruce Lee. Empty your mind. Be like water, my friend. What time is it now? Good. Good. Good, not an hour. Soon enough, you need to ask me stuff. Hi, everybody. Yes. Just to close the bag on the, on the... Yes, Johnny has a question. Just to close the bag on the whole uh, Uranus uh, Pluto. Yes. When you were starting with uh, uh, Uranus Pluto conjunction right? yes. in the 60s. Yes, 1963, so 4, 5. Then it takes, what, 80 years? Okay, it takes 84 that. years for Uranus to go around. And so by 1944, 47, more or less, it's a long phase. It's going to be several years four or five years more or less. That's why I mentioned it. If it was just an astrological contact that takes some months, I would say you're in the big picture. Forget it. But this is big stuff we're talking. So 84 years for Uranus, that brings it in 1944-47 back to that point in Virgo where it was in the 1960s. Pluto is more or less a 250 year thing. That's a long time. So that's let's say 
the United States of America of 1976, if you want to use that chart, would then be tracked back to its beginning. So, I mean, I'm sick with that. But in, in 2044, 45, 46, 47, Pluto will be in Pisces, exactly opposite of Uranus. So in, those, in that same time, 84 years, Pluto will have gone from the 12 o'clock position on your watch to the 6 o'clock position on your watch. Now you will say, yeah, but that's only one third of the 250 years, right? Why does it do half? Well, that's because Pluto is not exactly doing a circle. It's doing sort of a, a strange spin. And so your question was as to... So, so if the 60s meant X, yeah. what does Y mean in 45? That's a really good question, Johnny always comes up. I can't answer it like that, what it means, but maybe you can when you think about it. It means that Uranus is in the same spot, but I would suggest advanced, because real astrology is not as mathematical, arithmetical, and linear-minded only. Yes, it is, sure, there's mathematics, and only mathematics behind it. The entire star language is mathematics. But the point you need to understand among the astrologers, the others who have not studied astrology, possibly figure it out faster, is that the astrology that we in the Western world know today is a pretty rudimentary, simplified affair that we can grasp. But in reality, and I was taught this many, many thousands of years ago, astrology was alive. And it was multi-dimensional. You couldn't just draw it on a two-dimensional map or on a computer. You would have to understand astrology like Dr. Ed Mitchell explained to me, space travel. And he knows astrology. He said to me, okay, let's do my chart. So I did his chart. And I said, you know, you're Virgo and it did, blah, blah, blah. And then he said, so you understand the stars, right? Because I studied fixed stars, by the way. Fixed stars is the backdrop behind the planets. The planets are called wanderers in Greek, planets, and they just rotate around and around. That's so nice. And that much we can understand, you know, 10 planets, maybe 12, asteroids, centaurs, they're discovering more and more stuff as we go. So in 10 years our mathematical astrology is barely graspable even for an IQ of 200.